Welcome to the second episode of Jess Nicole Handmade. I'm Jessica and this is my podcast where I share the creative projects that I'm currently working on. Those usually include sewing, crochet, knitting, and block printing. Um, and then once in a while some other some other random crafts which actually I'll be sharing one today that will probably become a new staple for me if I get good at it. You can also find me on Instagram at Jess Nicole Handmade. And if you'd like to email me, you can do that at jess at jessnicolehandmade.com. And you can also find me on my website, jessnicolehandmade.com. Let's get into the crafts. This week, I have two finished objects to share with you. One, I actually shared the video of last week, and I will, um, I'll link that here. And it is my ED Top by Merchant and Mill. I love how it turned out. This fabric is by Birch fabrics and I picked that up at Stone Mountain Fabrics and then block printed the fabric myself and sewed it together. It's really comfortable. The fabric was pretty easy to work with. I love the drawstring sleeve bottom and you'll see here uh, the pattern actually says to make a buttonhole but I decided that I wanted to make a channel instead so what I did was I just folded, I folded in the seam and then sewed it and that gave me a channel to put this drawstring through and that's just easier for me. I've actually yet to master buttonholes so I didn't want to do that for this project. I was worried it wasn't going to turn out well and I would become frustrated and I actually like this better than having a buttonhole here. So that is my finished ED top. My next finished object is the Tool Roll Apron by Merchant and Mills. I sewed that yesterday and I am so happy with how it turned out. It's actually a gift for my mom for Mother's Day. And I'm definitely gonna make another one for myself. And I know a couple people who would like one too, so. I'll probably be making a few of these and maybe even try the tool roll option for myself because I have lots of like tools and craft supplies that would work great for the tool roll option. But let me show you the apron. I did make a couple additions because I just love little extras. Like I put this on the outside edge. Let me open it for you. It's actually filled already because I was so excited that I finished it that I filled it with the things that I'm also going to give her, but see, it's got a flap that you can fold over to where is the apron or have it the other way. But I put inside some little things that she can use for gardening. Some nice, some really nice um, clippers, trimmers. Um, yeah. And I'll link these below where I got them so that you can see and then these cute floral gloves which I know she'll love and what else oh the pattern they give this in the pattern but uh this is already written into the pattern to put these little for little tools or uh, pens you could put there and then I added another kind of little thing over here I added another one of these see if I can get it to show well. This thing here. I don't know what, how she can use them, but I just like the little extras. Like this, I also added this little loop over here so she can put some kind of gardening tool, whatever will fit into there. Canvas fabric I got on from a shop on Etsy. So I'll link that below too. And yeah. I was a little bit concerned it was going to be too heavy with this canvas because there's so many, well there's two, there's three, there's three different layers of canvas plus the strap. It's a little bit heavy with all the tools in it, but it's not. I tried it on, it fits, it fits well and it is, stays up just fine. So that is my Merchant and Mills tool apron and I think my mom's really gonna love it. I made the hat, which I showed last week, 
that matches this and I'll give that to her too. I made a couple mistakes on that hat, but I think she'll like it anyway, just to wear outside in the garden. So now I'll show you a couple of the projects that I'm currently working on. One of those is a second bucket hat from the Merchant Mills bucket hat pattern, which is a free pattern. And I can link that below too. I showed you last week my finished bucket hat and pieces I had cut out for the second one that I'm making. And I have since printed onto this canvas fabric with my stamps to match the lining fabric. I'm going to show you the lining that I'll be using too. And so the lining fabric I got on Spoonflower, and this is their cotton twill. And the pattern is from the designer Twig and Moth. And I can link that below too so you can get this fabric yourself if you'd like. I really love it. It's I forgot what the what the name of this design is called, but it just has so many sweet little nature treasures on it. And so that's how I chose my stamps. And yeah, I think it's gonna be really cute. I'm looking forward to doing the pattern again to hopefully fix those mistakes that I made on the first one where the, the fabric kind of puckered around the edge of the hat, which I think I can fix this time and not make, and make that not happen. So my next work in progress is a sweater that I'm knitting. And this is the Augustins number 16. I am just finishing up the skirt. I'm using two yarns here. One is Newtenden yarn. Newtenden, yeah, Newtenden yarn. And that is this kind of tannish taupe color. And then I'm also using this beautiful kind of maroon kind of a purplish brown. So I'm using that together. And this yarn is by Cedar House Yarns and this is their worsted yarn in the color bark. And so I'm almost done with the skirt and then I get to start on the sleeves. And part of the reason I've never actually made a sweater is because of sleeves. There's something about having to make two of the same thing that can it just feels like kind of daunting and I know a lot of knitters go through that same thing and get through it and make lots of sweaters so I feel like it's kind of a rite of passage to finally make a sweater and so this one I really like how simple it's been so far I mean you can see that the shapes are pretty simple it's a long tube and then there's a like an increase happening here and then it makes this beautiful ruffle that will become the skirt and I assume I've read a bit of the sleeve part of the pattern but I think that's going to be pretty simple to do too and I love patterns when they're when they're simple to when it's written so that the construction is pretty simple it makes it seem really doable like you know like making a sweater can seem very complex or you know constructing a garment from yarn or just knitting especially if you're a new knitter it can seem kind of like scary to make something that looks so complex but when it's simple to do that can change that like just change it in your mind, or at least in my mind, to feel like it's very doable and maybe give me the confidence to make more sweaters. I think it will. Okay, so lastly, I wanted to share a new craft that I've started. And it's something that I've done a little bit over the years, but not really like dove into, and that's embroidery. So I recently watched the new version of The Secret Garden, and once in a while, there's a film or a series that comes along that feels like it just embodies my aesthetic so well. 
I don't know, you know, just like the whole, the colors and the costumes and the architecture and the, everything just like speaks to my heart and like in a way that I don't know what else to do except pick up a new craft. So one of the main things as far as this craft, this embroidery is that in the movie, the, the main character, her costume or her clothing, it transforms when she enters the garden. And the way that the costume designer transforms her clothing is with mostly embroidery and some applique. As I was watching the movie, I was pausing it and taking photographs of my screen and, oh, here I can show you. I have them right here. So, kind of just, uh, yeah, I took pictures and even went as far as to print them off so that I could have them to look at when I'm deciding what I'm going to embroider because after I saw this coat, I had the distinct realization that I need moss embroidered onto my clothes. I need to figure out how to do this so that I can have moss and ferns on something. So that is what I'm learning. I'm learning dip I'm I'm learning about different ways to embroider and these different terms like stump work and the different what's the other thing? Oh, the painting with thread. I'm trying that out too. And um just the different stitches that it would take to make to make embroidery look like moss. And so I have some ideas of how to do that. I've even watched a few videos on YouTube and I can link those below if you're interested in learning a little bit more about embroidery and these different techniques that I'm learning. The one thing about embroidery too is that it is actually a really inexpensive craft to, to start. Like if you wanna start embroidery, the, the supplies are actually really inexpensive. You need needles, which are pretty cheap. You can get beautiful colors of embroidery floss and the, these are 60 cents a piece. I, I mean, I got every single color that I wanted and this DMC brand makes, I think it's over 500 different colors and so I just went to the store and grabbed every color that I liked. And so I have a new craft and I'll be sharing more about that in later podcasts and even have a sort of secret garden inspired garment idea that I'm starting to. So I'll make that into its own video. Well, that is it for this week's episode. And thank you so much for spending time with me today. Bye.